I'm going to wet fly here today. This is called the Montreal. Now, I've seen this also called the Dark Montreal, and I'm not certain exactly why that is, um, as opposed to there being a regular Montreal or a light Montreal. And the reason I say that is that if you look in Ray Bergman's book, Trout, the recipe that he calls for is, is just this fly right here. It's a scarlet tail, a claret floss body, and a claret throat with a brown turkey wing. Um, I have seen this referred to as, like I said, the dark Montreal with the exact same recipe. So I don't know if somewhere out there is a version that is the regular Montreal or the light Montreal, but anyway, this is a nice uh, wet fly, nice coloring to it. It's a, a great little fly, especially I think in the fall, it works really well. One of the reasons that I wanted to do this is it uses the turkey for the wing, which sometimes when you're starting to get into matched wings on wet flies, it's a little easier to work with than say the, the duck or goose and matching those up. Uh, turkey can be a little bit more forgiving. So anyway, that's the Montreal and I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to start the Montreal by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 in a size 6. Go ahead and debarb the hook. And then I'll attach my thread. For thread, I'm using two different colored threads. I'm using a white Uni 8 aught. This is just a base layer of thread so that the floss body does not darken up on the hook. I'm going to attach that about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Then I'm going to advance it down the hook shank to about the point of the hook. I want to try and take care. I don't have to have exact touching turns, but I want to try and keep it as smooth as possible. When I get to the point of the hook, I'll pop off the excess thread. Now I'm going to tie in my tag. For a tag, it's a gold Mylar tag. So I'm using a Danville Mylar tinsel. This is a size 16 and 18. I shall attach that to the hook with the silver side up. And I'll advance my thread all the way down to the end of the body. The end of the body is going to be I just let the thread hang, it's going to be pretty much right between the point of the hook and the barb of the hook. Turning the hook over, I'll apply my rib. Because this is such a thin mylar, I'm going to put about five to six turns of mylar. Oops, that accidentally flipped over to the silver side. That happens sometimes. Even though I have a gold side up here, I'm mean, excuse me, the silver side up, sometimes it doesn't flip over just right. So as I was saying, because this is a thin, very narrow mylar, I'm going to put about five or six turns of mylar down the bend of the hook. I want the end of the tag to be just past the barb of the hook. And then I'll put five or six turns back up, giving me a nice smooth tag, and I'll secure that to the hook. Trim away the excess. Now I can put the tail in. The Montreal calls for a scarlet hackle tail. I'm just going to use, this is a um, this is just a red rooster saddle. I think it's a Chinese saddle. I'm just going to pluck out a feather here. I want to use the larger 
I should say longer fibers that are down at the end. So I'll trim away the, pull away the fluff here. And it depends, you don't have to have a real thick tail on this, but I like it pronounced enough that it stands out. So I'll peel away some fibers from the rachis. I'll bunch these together and I'll tie these in. I'm gonna measure these about a shank length long, maybe a little bit longer if you want. Notice I'm wrapping down the hook shank, trying to keep things nice and smooth. If your barbs are long enough to extend over the front of the hook, go ahead and trim those down the length of the body. Now, where these were pulled off of the rachis, there's a lot of kind of curlies on the end of those. I trim those off and I try to trim those at a little bit of an angle. This will give me a little bit smoother body. If I don't trim those off where they all pile up, you're going to get a little bit of a bump. I'm going to tie in my rib. The rib is going to be made out of the same mylar tinsel that's size 16 to 18, and it's a gold rib. So I will attach that to the hook again with the silver side up, pulling the end of that down so it's just inside the body. And again, notice that I am wrapping my thread down the hook shank to the end of the body. I'm not piling it up in one place. I want to keep that nice and smooth. For the body on this, it calls for a claret uh, floss. This is actually a Danville four strand rayon in a wine color. That's about the closest as I can get to a claret. I'm going to use two strands, not all four strands. I'm just going to use two. And I'll attach those on my side of the hook, pulling the ends down so they're just inside the length of the body. Now I'll start wrapping my thread forward in touching turns to lash all that down to the hook shank and give myself a nice smooth underbody for the floss. Here I am going to take some time to make certain that I don't let this twist on the hook shank as well as I get touching turns or very, very close to touching turns so that I have a nice smooth underbody. When I get to the end of the body, I'll stop. Now I'll take my floss and I will apply that to the hook shank to create the body. down and trim away the excess. Now I'll apply the rib. This will flip to the gold side up. I get one rib right or one wrap right at the end of the body and then I start applying it in an open spiral to get five evenly spaced wraps as I work my way up the body. sixth wrap should come right up on my side inside the head space. I'll anchor that down. Trim away the excess. At this time I'm going to switch over to my black thread. This also is a Uni 8 aught in black. I don't need the white thread anymore. I'm 
Now I'm ready to tie on my throat and my wing. Montreal, the throat is a claret, and I'm using a, this is a Chinese strong rooster saddle hackle. You could use a schloppen feather if you want as well. I'm just going to use the, the very soft kind of webby fibers that are down towards the base of the that feather, not the very, very fluffy fibers right here, but rather the long ones just above those. So I'll pull away the excess. I will get a bunch of those fibers off to one side. You can do this all off one side of the rachis if you want, but if it's easier, then pull one clump from one side and one from the other, and then add those together. Hold those, the tips of those and peel those off, and then bunch those together. And now you have all the fibers for your throat. Place them on the underside of the hook. I like to have the tips just inside the gap of the hook, maybe as far back as the barb. Some people like them longer, some people like them a little shorter. And then using a pinch wrap, bring my thread up four or five turns to anchor that in place. And I'll trim away the excess as close as I can to those thread wraps. Anchoring those down, smoothing off the head space, bring my thread back to the back of the head, and now I'm ready for the wing. For the wing, I'm using a, a turkey tail, modeled turkey tail. You're going to want two of them. Basically, you're going to have a left and a right side to these. Um, even though the turkey lays pretty flat, we do want to cut these out in such a way as to, um, so that we don't get a lot of this curve going on the outside. It all gets flattened out down along the back. So I'm going to separate some of these out and I'm going to cut a fairly wide section. I'll show you here. I'm going to trim that out and pull this out. And the reason is why I cut it so long here, so wide is, as you can see, when you get out to the tail, this all thins out and narrows out, I should say towards the tip. So when I'm matching this up and tying this in, I have all these, these long narrow tips, but this whole part right here doesn't really get used. I will pull out my other slip here and I will match those up. You want to try and match these up on the, the feather as best you can in terms of uh, the slope right here, how much it comes up and how thin it is. Sometimes that's rather difficult to do because this is the way the feathers grow. But, um, you know, take care. If you want a nice looking wing, um, just take a little bit of care there. So I'm going to place this on top of the hook shank with the tips about halfway down the tail. And notice there's a lot of barbs right here that I'm going to have to compress down onto the hook. So I'm going to take some care here to make certain I'm pinching this very well. I'm going to bring my thread up in between my fingers, making certain it's right straight up, and then bringing it down on the other side. I'm going to make certain it comes in, and I'm going to pull this down real slow and steady. I don't want to try and pull it down too quick. You can actually cut through those barbs. Removing my hand to see that my wraps are 
not right behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to put in about a half a dozen wraps to compress those barbs real well and then take a look at what I got. And that looks pretty good. Yep, it's down on both sides of the hook pretty well. Although it's splitting just a little bit. And then I'll trim away the excess. Now, if you're so inclined as to uh, save little snippets and scraps, you might keep these little sections of turkey because these could make uh, great little wing cases for nymphs or something like that, if you're so inclined. Then taking my thread, I'm going to come down to the eye of the hook and come back and I'm going to bind the rest of those turkey fibers in to clean the head up and bring this back to even that up. Make certain I have all those fibers covered. Even though I'm going to put some black lacquer on this, it's nice to make certain that they're all covered and it's all nice and smooth. And I'll put in a seven or eight turn whip finish. That secures the head. And I will add some head cement just on the sides, just a little bit. That'll soak down in. I don't really want it to soak into the wing that much or the throat. Some of it does, but I mostly want it to soak down into those threads. So once those are all soaked into those threads, I'll come back with some black lacquer and I shall coat the head of that with some black lacquer to make it look nice and polished and nice and finished. And that is the Montreal. Fun little fly to tie if you're wanting to get into doing some matched wing type things and, and feeling a little intimidated. Flies like this with the turkey in them are a little bit easier. As I said, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to that certain sections of the turkey will have uh, very, very narrow sweeping tips like this right here. Whereas maybe on another feather, um, they, they don't quite sweep out as narrow or in certain sections, but they match up real easy. They're easy to work with. Um, they have nice length to them. So I, I find the turkey fun and um, very easy to work with in terms of learning how to start doing some wet flies. So that's the Montreal. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.